Hello, for this short review video, we are going to look at some basic vocabulary to start the correlation unit or the correlation unit review, depending on when you're coming into the video and what you're using this video to, to, to demonstrate. So we're going to basically just talk about correlation coefficient and the coefficient of determination, the difference between the two, and what you can actually do with them mathematically. So the first thing we're going to do is just explain what is the correlation coefficient. The correlation coefficient is r, and r is a commonly just known as what is the regression. Now, the r means the linear strength in the problems that we were looking at in this unit, the linear strength between the two variables. So the strength also can talk about the weakness as well. And in terms of the correlation coefficient, we had a spectrum between 0, which had no correlation, to positive 1, which was strong positive correlation, and negative 1, which is strong negative correlation. In fact, what we did with an R test, based on some of the tables that you've had, an R test is to see, is your R value strong enough, based on your degrees of freedom and minus 2, to basically reject the null hypothesis, which means that there is no correlation. The null hypothesis and most of all the basic problems that we worked with were, were that there was no correlation. But if you found that your R was big enough or small enough, um, you could actually say that, yeah, there's strong enough correlation there to say that there is something happening there. Um, the linear strength, I do want to kind of mention this too, in this introductory course we really only did linear regression, but there's also exponential and quadratic regression. Uh, very useful for uh, the exponentials, very use for, useful for tracking populations or maybe infection rates. And the quadratic regression is incredibly useful in business um, where they're just trying to match a curve or just in recent times if you're trying to match a bell curve to let's say an infection rate curve, uh, the quadratic regression is very, very useful. Now the coefficient of determination is R squared. And what does it mean? Well, what it means, and this is a more complicated answer to this question, is what percent is based on the independent variable affecting the dependent variable. So this is this statement right here is the closest we will probably get to saying causation, but it really is a very weak way to say causation. One of the main focuses of this unit is that correlation is not causation. Hopefully you've heard that before this course, but if you haven't heard it before, Finding a correlation between two objects does not mean that the one object is causing the other object. I mean, it's possible, but just merely having a correlation does not mean it's a causation. Um, I want to now highlight one of, the, one of my favorite podcasts, uh, Freakonomics, that did a podcast called Should Tipping Be Banned? And the, the act of tipping is to give the server um, some extra money after they give you very good service or if you didn't like the service maybe you would give them less tip. Well according to the data found in this podcast and found by the researcher who has done um, many many studies and papers on just the act of tipping he found that there was a very low correlation between people who actually give good service and the size of their tip. Because mostly we all like to say, well, the better the service, the better the tip. But the data doesn't bear that out. There are too many other factors at play, um, namely attractiveness of your server. If you are attracted to him or her, 
uh, they could cause you to tip differently based on how you like them. So there's a problem and what they found out is that the correlation coefficient of tipping based on good behavior or good service was only 0.2. Now that means that there was a 20% because 0.2 is the same thing as 0 0.20. There is a 20% correlation between the good service, the amount of good service to the size of tip, which is very, very low. It's, it's slightly positive, but it still uh, could be close enough to zero where you might think that the good service had little to no effect. Now, how do we get R squared? Well, you literally take your 0 0.20 and you square it. And that will give you, when you take 0 0.2 raised to the second power, this will give you 0 0.04 or 4%. So let us talk about what this 4% means in this problem. The 4% is the percentage that's based on the independent variable affecting the dependent variable. Okay, so I've got two variables in this problem. I have good service and I have tip. Now I have to I have to see here that this good service right here and tip are two different variables. So which one's the independent variable? The one that we can control. Well, that would be the good service. The good service is well within every server's ability. And the tip is the dependent variable. So the good service affects the tip and the tip depends on the good service. So what this means is that 4% of the tip, this is the dependent variable, was affected by the good service. And that is how you explain the coefficient of determination. It really follows a pattern of the percent of the dependent variable was affected by the independent variable. So that is a cool and clean way to think about the coefficient of determination. You take your correlation coefficient, your percentage of um, how one variable affected the other, square it, and then you can see that, oh, well shoot, if there's only a 20% correlation between service and tip, then 4% of your tip, only 4% of your tip, was determined by your good service. The other 96% is unknown. And I have you write unknown on the test just so you're basically uh, pointing out the fact that there is a lot of percent that's not actually explained if we just look at the two variables tip and good service. I gave you some examples in terms of tipping, how you might be um, more affected by their appearance or their personality, and that would get a bigger percentage of that 100% that would make up the tip. But you can now see that tipping isn't just about good service. Tipping's about a lot of other factors. Have you tipped well when you were in a bad mood or a good mood? I mean, these are great factors, and I really strongly want you to seek out uh, data and um, analysis of tipping, because what the data is showing, and, the, and this again, the sources are Freakonomics, and uh, Adam ruins everything if you want to watch a little college humor, um, the, the data doesn't really correlate to good service when you tip, and as always, we should be better tippers anyway. So the golden rule is 20%, $1 for every $5 spent, always round up, because if you can't afford the dollar, then um, 
don't go out to eat. And finally, if you do have bad service, you should still leave a good tip, but maybe talk to the manager while you're having the bad service, and that way you can get the service fixed before you may leave a tip that would reflect more poorly on you and not actually correct the behavior of the poor tipping. So again, call a manager, be a little assertive, but be nice while being assertive, and you will get better service and you will um, you know, get what you pay for. All right, well, thank you for watching this little introduction slash review of correlation coefficient and coefficient of determination.